So we decided we'll, we are go going back, we are going to a computer right now. And what we are looking is, we are looking at, we are looking at MSDN. So what it is, is let's, let's look at this font, right? So uh, do you want me to increase the font a little bit? Okay, so okay, I think this is good, this should be good, right? We are just looking at the diagram, right? So if the diagram comes up, I think we are good. Uh, so this is a this is a regular MSDN page, so you can just search for assembly manifest and you'll find it. Uh, so what does an assembly contain, right? So when you when you make an assembly, what does it contain? It contains an assembly manifest. We'll talk about what it is. It basically is assembly metadata. It contains type metadata. What is type metadata? It contains the MSIL and a set of resources. So let's talk about all of these, right? So a typical assembly will contain the assembly manifest. What is an assembly manifest? The assembly manifest contains that, hey, for my assembly, what is the assembly name? What is the name of the assembly? What is the version number? What is the culture? What is the strong name information? This is where it, it has the public key information. We'll talk about this. List of files in the assembly. Okay, what are all the files that are contained in the assembly? The type reference information. What it means is that, okay, if you're using type A, then which file, where do you get it from if it's not present here? That's where the that's where it's defined, it's the assembly manifest. And information on reference assemblies that, okay, where do I find? And you know, like if I am, I am dependent on assembly B, what is that assembly's uh, metadata, like version, culture, and public key token, so on. A typical, uh, thus a typical assembly contains the assembly manifest, it contains the type metadata which basically contains that all the types that it is defined in that particular assembly will just contain all that. It will contain the actual code and uh, the MSIL code implementing those types, you know, the properties and the methods and resource, any resources that you kind of, you know, if you bundle into that assembly. Resources are like, you know, for example, here it's the resources are graphic, uh, is a bit map file. Um, so that's 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 pretty much it. The metadata, you know, it contains, you know, it will contain all these things. What what we now want to do is we'll actually look, we'll try to load a uh, file and see how its IL looks like. Okay. So what uh, what I'm going to what we are going to do is so what I'm using is I'm using the um, the code examples from the CLRY C sharp book. They are freely available on the web, right? So you can just go and look it up. So what we are going to do is, um, let's say we are we are going to actually do run this. So I want to run this particular batch file. So let's look at what this batch file is, right? Okay. So this is the part of the file, so I'm just going to copy it. Okay, so so this is how this is what the batch file is, right? It says that it will first compile a file that is re, you know frequently. So there are two files, FUT and RUT. FUT is frequently used types. Okay, so let me just select this. Give me a minute. Properties. I always forget this. Okay. Okay, so there, is, there are two files, FUT and RUT. FUT is frequently used types and RUT is rarely used types. So what is happening here is that you are first compiling RUT into a different module file, right, first. The second what you are doing is you are creating an assembly, you, are, you know, that's jefftypes.dll and you said it's a, it's a type of library and you are adding the, you are compiling it with the FUT, the frequently used type CS file and you are adding the earlier compiled as a module to it okay what it basically means is that in this particular DLL it just contains the IL for frequently used type right and it just contains a reference to the RUT so you can use it but it's not contained there what will happen is when the moment you try to use it it will try to get that particular IL so let's say you are, you know, giving this over the web. This is useful, right? You don't have to send a bigger DLL. You can just set, initially send a smaller DLL. And only if it is needed will the other modules be loaded. So that's what packaging is all about, right? Or the other way to do it is you 
compile both of them into the same assembly right so otherwise no no the otherwise is they are there are two different modules that you get compiled into and then the dll just contains that you know what it's a combination of these two modules so it has no il whatsoever so let's see we'll actually see how how these two things work so uh, let's how do we build this right so let's try to build it by by way one first right so i'm going to uh come file i i'm going to compile the module rut okay i did that now i'm going to compile so okay so now we compile this is way this is the first manner whereby what we are doing is we we first compile readily used type into one module and then we compile the frequently used type into another into the dll itself right so let's load up the il for it and what we do is we just use il dasm this is the il disassembler so we we use this tool that is provided by microsoft right and we can load up any file so let's try to open this file okay and this is the file actually so it's it just got created jeff types right so let's see so what is what does it contain right so this is very important that we take a look into it um is it big enough maybe it's not okay so let me try to change the resolution okay uh, just give me a minute i'm trying to change the